Um, I remember the first time that I heard uh, Exxon Guyville. But I mean, yeah, there was this talk of this, this record. It's a song by song reply to Exile on Main Street. Is that true? Yes. But, you know, but when people were saying, like, you know, she spent months like assembling this song for song response to the Rolling Stones. I did. Oh, come on. It wasn't a double record. Yeah. But it's not really a double album. It could have been the entire thing on one record. I don't remember a whole lot of. Like subterfuge. But also, what started, but also what started say. happening was I just don't remember it going well. And it was super easy going. It was like, oh wow, this is really fun and easy. I've never made a record like this. And it was exciting because I knew it could be really, really, really bright. How am I going to get this done? You know, like, these are amazing and so on. But I also knew how bad it was going to end up being. She has this quality about how she delivers this, the lyrics. It's so... When I heard it for the first time, how conversational your lyrics were, and how it really just like rolled off the tongue. It's so endearing. Every song seemed completely motivated from inside, and then the sound bit is really good. It's like the opposite of expression. It's like, <laughs> I'm trying to express myself in a way that actually someone will hear me. Do you think you'll always be the... Wrath of the repressed. I'm gonna fucking slap that he son of a bitch. If I ever see that head. son of a bitch again, I will Casey? fucking scratch his eyes out. It's consistently entertaining. When did you write this? <laughs> right? There was a there was a particularly insulting, like sort of slant on the Chicago music scene at the time. Things hadn't really started happening in Chicago in the sense of major labels coming to sign. I miss it. I miss that sense of everyone being, you know, that you see your, you, you, you were part of something. I wanted Guyville to basically catapult me into the neighborhood status, and it just went, like, way past it. Yeah, I don't know what happened then. I mean, all of a sudden, yeah, you were off, and that record was off, and you were gone, you know. I went from being someone who was a regular in the neighborhood to being talked about. That's how we viewed the mainstream show business music scene. Like, you fucking indie guys. I love you fucking indie guys. You made this record for how much? Which we all found repulsive. It seemed like everybody in Wicker Park suddenly hated me. No. But I can't believe she did that. That's so lame. Well, I hated you before. <laughs> you have become exactly, precisely what we hated all along. It was the role you were born to play.